Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> nice to see ya. My name is Dustin Cormier, and this is How to Rock Astrology. Uh, if you have been watching this series, uh, this episode is all about Mars and Pisces with the Sun in Libra <clears throat> in a natal chart, <clears throat> together in a natal chart. Uh, this is a continuation of our Mars in the Signs series. If you want to learn a bit more about Mars and Pisces before you digest this video, I recommend it. Give you a little bit more of a sense of Mars and Pisces <clears throat> and what it brings to Libra Sun consciousness. Uh, this series is mostly focused on what Mars brings to the table. <clears throat> now, I am a tropical Vedic astrologer. Uh, I use Vedic philosophy, but I use Western measurements. I don't bring the signs back 24 degrees or whatever. So I'm always trying to bring, and it is different from the Western sense of things. Um, Western can, takes many different roads for defining planets and energies and signs and what have you. Uh, I go by the traditional Vedic way. And my sort of personal overall synopsis about this sign combination is that obviously the sun is not doing the best by being debilitated in Libra. That's just what it is. Uh, and this Mars and this sun, Mars and Pisces with the sun and Libra are counterposed to each other in a certain way. Uh, you know, sign... These are two signs that don't necessarily, when planets are there, they don't necessarily work together all that great. The Mar Mars is in the sixth house from this Libra sun. Uh, Pisces is the sixth house from the sixth sign from Libra. So this Mars can, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Having Mars in the sixth position from anything is kind of natural to Mars. Vedic people will know that the sixth house has Mars for a karaka, a significator. Mars has this aggressive, pushy energy, uh, which makes do Mars do okay in sixth house positions, although it does bad in Virgo. Signs and houses are two different things. Keep that in mind. So this Mars might feel like it takes on a sensitivity to something that the Libra is frustrated with. Um, what's going on here, and I'll explain it this way. How I would say it is that Mars in Pisces is a good placement. Sun in Libra is not the best placement because, again, the sun is debilitated in Libra. But Mars is good in Pisces. Mars is in the sign of a friend here, being traditionally Pisces is ruled by Jupiter, and Mars here is in the sign of its friend Jupiter. It's being pushed into... Jupiter is all about self-realization, the guru within. It's about self-enjoyment and preference, self-preference. So Mars and Pisces is a bit of a fun, it's, they're, they're so fun because they can be blah, they'll say what's on their mind, they're witty, and they're a little bit like pushy in a, in a, in a juicy, noble way. They can be very noble about knowing what is their preferences, what is funny. They can be so funny because the self in one is the self in all. So Mars and Pisces will do funny things like they'll, they'll, they're kind of like unapologetic about their sensual delights and pleasures and appetites. Mars and Pisces actually does much better than most Western texts probably give because Western texts assume that Pisces is all about this like 12th house vibe this neptune vibe of like being in like a hermitage where there's no sensuality no delights you're trying to get into this attachment in isolation but the sign of pisces is one of the 12 signs in the cycle of natural arc consciousness archetypes uh it's not the same evolutionary progression vibe that the 12th house is Anything in the twelfth house is dealing. You're dealing with past life karma as relates to the soul, as relates to the ascendant. Pisces is not the twelfth sign from an important, like uh, like your your ascendant. You're you're not necessarily an Aries rising. If 
you're an Aries rising, you'd be dealing with the 12th house placement here. Pisces is not the same as the 12th house. It's just another sign. And so Pi Mars and Pisces is not so mute as Westerners might make you believe. Uh, it's actually ruled by Jupiter, and it's the inverse of, you know, whereas Sag Sagittarius is outgoing, Mars and Sagittarius is blah, we'll say anything and we'll go by its ex outgoing instinct. Mars and Pisces is deeply preferential to its incoming instinct, right? It puts itself into situations, life livelihoods, people, situations that it enjoys. And it's unapologetic about what it enjoys. And that's why we love Mars and Pisces. It's, it's actually just a wily thing. Part of the reason is because Mars here is in a water sign. And you'll notice that Mars rules what? Aries, and it's also traditionally a primary ruler of Scorpio. So Mars rules Aries and Scorpio. Now you'll notice that Jupiter also rules Sagittarius and Pisces. It's because these two are best friends. They operate on the same internal. It's the fire and water is coming from within, whereas air and earth are more of like external. They're all about how you communicate. They're all about the field that you involve yourself in Saturn. They're all about relationships and the type of person, the the person. Venus is about the person. Whereas Jupiter is about you. And you have are just as important in any relationship. Now herein comes the antagonism of Sun and Libra with Mars and Pisces. I would say here that the Sun is a bit of a problem for anyone with Sun in Libra. Don't be dismayed by that. Of course, we're talking about astrology. I have, I have Venus in Virgo, and it friggin' sucks. But it's still a planet. It's still an energy, and Virgo is still the place for my Venus. And I have it's my karma, and it's my joy. It's my bliss. My lover will take on all the problems associated with Venus and Virgo, but it's still my Venus. They're still my lover. That's still my gate to love in this world, and I have to deal with it as the energy comes through. Same thing with you and your sun in Libra. It's not the best way to express the sun, but your karma, your reality, your life is going to situate you to that's, that's what you are. The point here is, is that everyone's dealing with some kind of karma somewhere. The sun is just one planet, uh, and... Your sun being in Libra now is just something you got to go through. The next run of lives, you might be in something different, so don't feel too bad about it. In the meantime, consider that it's a good thing that you've got Mars and Pisces because this is really going to help give you a grip to your preferences in a relationship, your preferences in a job. Libra shoots itself in the foot, and it's Libra that's the problem here. Again, don't take this bad, but I'm just being straight with you and... You're gonna yeah. the more the sooner somebody tells you this, the sooner you can get over it and realize that it's not such a bad thing, uh, and that it's it's what you are. I don't want you know to say that like you've got this bad sun and that you can't be a warrior and you can't use your sun. You could have positive aspects to your sun, uh, etc. My point here is to say that while you know, so the sun in Libra. Part of the strength of the sun in Libra, it gains its strength. You gain you, what you are in life and you move yourself around in your life by listening to other people, by looking at what your boss wants you to do, looking at what the company that you've pushed, put yourself into likes, by, and also by you know, showing, by being receptive and sensitive to your partner's needs and desires and likes, whether you're a man or you're a woman. Uh, and this is a very good thing. It's beautiful for somebody to be so willing to not care about getting shafted. You know, being there for your lover uh, until like, you know, like telling them, honey, we haven't hung out with each other for a long time. Six o'clock tonight, we're going to hang out, we're going to watch a movie, we're going to do the thing. And I'm going to do that for you. And then your lover goes and says, okay, honey, I'll be there. And then six o'clock comes and says, baby, you know, I'm going to be late because work has got me for two hours and I just have to do it. 
and you as the beautiful libra that you are you say oh that's okay baby you know i i just want you to know that i love you and but you just get here whenever you got to get here and then they get there and then you end up getting shafted because you're that lovely libra and that's just part of the vibe that happens with libra is that you're so willing to accommodate now it's the Mars and Pisces here that will be fine, funny and kind of cheeky about like, boy, is my vagina ever not flattered right now? Who? What's that all about, huh? <laughs> and then like, <laughs> or, you know, like whatever it is, you know, you'll find some indirect funny like, well, boy, I really would have enjoyed tonight if we had actually gotten able to hang out with each other. It's the Mars and Pisces is willing to be honest here. But the Libra in you will say, oh, honey, I'm just, I'm just kidding. You know, don't, don't feel too bad because I love you and I'm going to love you no matter what. But it's the Mars and Pisces is a little bit like willing to be honest about its needs and its preferences and will move towards them. Now, this might be frustrating that the Libra is trying to be so accommodating for others and people might take you at the sun if you're going out with like a Gemini. You know, if you're going out with a Gemini sun or a Gemini rising and they love you for your accommodating Libra sun because you communicate so nicely and you listen to what the other person has to say. And the Gemini rising might feel a bump when you suddenly come through with an honest expression of your genuine preferences and needs in your relationship. And they're like, whoa, I thought you were Mr. Libra person. You know, all of a sudden all now you're... <laughs> You know, you might feel this weird contradiction because the Libra wants to just absolutely be a doormat for the lover, but your Mars and Pisces says, I can do that. I can make my lover know that I'm this type of person, but I don't want them taking advantage of me. I put in this much effort for this relationship and I ought to have it come back to me. Uh, and I ought to enjoy who I'm with. This is really the big one for you is that you're the Libra and you will attract people to you who you do love, but they are always going to see that you can't, you won't necessarily be that doormat. You won't necessarily to the nth degree, just pull yourself into whatever your lover wants to do. Although you will, you ultimately will. This is a person who will definitely do what the lover wants in a lot of ways. That's your strength. It's just that the Mars and Pisces will find ways to communicate in a nice way when you feel like you're getting screwed over, when your needs aren't being met, and that's a healthy thing. It might feel weird to your Libra ego that you stand up for yourself in this way, but it's a good thing. Uh, so I would say Mars and Pisces won't, be, won't fake things. And the Mars and Pisces here is helping the Libra sun. Ultimately, that Libra sun, though, it just won't apply itself to the highest use of this Mars and Pisces. It's a poet. It can be funny and emotional. But there will be times where you hold your tongue in order to be here nobly for your lover, to listen to what they have to say, and to serve them, to serve your boss, to serve the people around you, because that's very much part of just what you really want to do the libra ego wants to do and this just puts a stop to your own ambition in a way puts us it, it, it obstructs your own highest noblest expression unless you know unless the sun has got aspects to jupiter or if something else that makes the sun very important if you're a leo rising then it's really going to come through with more of an emphasis of your own ambitions regarding the libra sun in which case you'll be somebody who uses the Mars and Pisces to not necessarily manipulate, but maneuver the people and aesthetics and emo emotions of those around you in order to get what you want, which is a comfortable life, a comfortable lover, etc. It's not a bad thing. So all of this is just kind of warming up, essentially, you know, the reading today. Um, you know, Libra is a very deliciously aesthetically sensitive and refined person an atmospheric person and this does actually play very well on what we know of the mars and pisces to also be poetic and emotional you are somebody who the libra sun is receptive and is listening to the other person but you can also come through with a delicious juicy mystical mars and pisces that will laugh 
spontaneously and expressively at, at things and is willing to be a little bit more loosey-goosey, a little bit more spontaneous, and even like seeming to be fiery, although it's not so much fiery as watery. Uh, you're a bit more in touch with your own emotional wavelengths than a lot of Libra, a lot of other Libras that you might know. Uh, and at that level, they are compensatory. The Mars and Pisces sensitivity does cater well to the Libra's desire to be respected for its ability to listen, for its ability to be graceful, to have that slight delicious touch and even to add a flair to it that's very uh, enjoyable f for all people who are being with this Libra you know it's like consider that the Libra Sun is the ego and the Mars is in the sixth house that hot annoying agitated Mars and Pisces in the sixth from the Sun it's agitated because it knows that it's muting its own what it wants to say in order to be receptive in this moment to the partner. That's what that is. And you'll feel that there are times when you're missing out on your truth. You're missing out on your ability to be fun and have your opinion heard. Uh, it's kind of probably sometimes come off that way to you. Uh, but this agitation energy is, it can be applied, especially if that Mars is well-placed, if Jupiter especially, if your Jupiter is well-placed, You'll have the sense to know how to apply this agitated, the, the feeling that you're, that could be saying something in this moment or that you should have said something more in, in, that, in this or that moment. If you got a good Jupiter, that agitation energy will just mean that you are paying attention to yourself and how you apply yourself in your relationships. And that is a good thing for a Libra because that's your bread and butter, you know? So don't be agitated by it. Consider it a good thing that you have this sensitivity to yourself in your surrender to whatever it is that you surrender yourself to. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, that's a pretty good, pretty good roundup of this energy. I was going to read from, I usually read from erotic astrology, uh, but it's basically really lacing over everything that I've just said already. Uh, you possess the ability to make your desires known with little more than a subtle hint or provocative glance. And that really helps with the Libra. You know, sometimes Libra doesn't want to say anything, and that's just the part of the cuteness of Libra. They'll put their hands on their mouths and those and then the lover just has to read what's going on there. The Mars and Pisces, again, knowing what's good for it and speaking to it, applying it, it's gonna be able to show even with this little thing just you know, like pointing at like we didn't go to that movie that we were supposed to go to. Uh and you know and you'll see it. And it's gonna be much more obvious to your lover what's wrong than it would be with other Libras. Don't feel bad about that. Be honest. Leak the back of your mind into your lover so they know what's how to cater to the lovely receptive energy that you apply to them. It's a good thing. Even if it feels dissonant, it's ultimately a, a good thing that your Mars helps you out in that way. So, I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. I hope this was helpful, my Libra friend. Uh, if you enjoyed how I do my whole thing here, feel free to like, subscribe, uh, and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Uh, it's a burgeoning community in this world here. Uh, I'm always trying to introduce my Vedic con conception of things to these signs, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, keep your eyes peeled, because I got lots more stuff coming out. Thanks for watching. This is How to Rock Astrology. See you guys on the next one.